Hi everyone, in this tutorial um, it's, I'm going to show you how to use Be Funky again and this time it's going to be to montage a couple of images together. Um, I'm going to do more of these, so I'm going to do some where I do like say three or a couple of dogs heads and a cat maybe or three dog heads that your client if you're doing commissions sends to you as say three separate photos. I've also got the one to do for you on like a by putting a dog onto a more complicated background but I'm going to do a couple of more simple ones today to get us going so I'm going to use this image here that you'll recognize of Aura um, or the cats this is a, a more of a not quite a, as cropped you can see another cat in the window there that cat there I wouldn't let me take many photos he was petrified but Aura was a beautiful model so what I'm going to do is first of all is you need to get all your images ready um, or th that your client sends you into a folder so I want to pop this one onto a coloured pastel mat so what I would do is I would save uh, find an image of that colour pastel mat you can find all pastel matte shades online as images so here I've got the dark grey pastel matte so I'm going to use this as an example so you need you're going to be opening things up in layers so if you imagine if you were doing this um, with a real piece of pastel matte in your studio which you can do and then you would print out your images of your dog or your cat and everything that you want to draw on it then you would you know, place it down on here so we're going to do exactly the same thing so if you think of your layer of pastel matte is one layer and then your cutout of your cat is another layer and then we're going to add something else with the cat or a couple of different images we're going to do with the cat um, so they're all layers so what you want to do is you come over here next this is your main image which is your background so come over here the top one is your image manager so I'm going to upload some images from my computer so I'm going to upload, I've got a butterfly there. I'm going to upload that one in there. And I'm also going to upload Aura herself. We need the model herself. And I'm going to upload Sherlock. So we're going to try a couple of different versions. So first thing I'm going to do, you can, you can drag this one across if you want to. But I'm going to add it as a layer. So I'm going to add it as a layer. And then I'm going to come down to this option here, which is to cut out. So hopefully it's going to pick up. It's got a, you know, a clever, intelligent thing. It should pick up what I want to cut out, which is the cat. Let's hope. So let's click cut out. I want to remove the background. So it's doing this little thing. Hopefully it's going to find the cat and cut the cat out nicely. If it doesn't, there you go. It's done it perfectly. If it didn't, we can go back in with a brush and we can actually um, remove things. Now... let's have a look if it had left anything in basically you can come in with this brush so if I'm going to show you I'm going to do this but then I don't want to keep it so you what you do if it, if it had left a piece in here say we didn't want all of this fur or this bit of ear say that was wasn't part of the cat and it picked up part of the background you can just come in and remove that bit if you want to but I don't want to I'm going to undo it so I'll find some images that are harder for it to um, differentiate between the main subject and the background for some future little tutorials like this but we'll keep this one nice and simple so I'm going to apply that now and I want to export it as a layer so I'm going to export it as a layer um, and that way it will save onto my over into my media library over here so it will be there for me to use in future I'm also going to trim the transparency and it will just really just crop it right down to that image and then apply Okay, so there you go. I've got a layer there now. So I'm going to click on that original picture, which I don't want anymore, and I'm going to delete it. I've hit delete on my um, computer. So now I'm going to just tap on that cat and that and drag it out to make her bigger. Now I don't know if I want her all of her in. I'm going to just come in and maybe crop her head. So let's have a look. Let's edit the image. So I'm still working. As long as you've got that box highlighted, it means you're working on that layer. So I'm going to edit the image so now it's going to isolate just that image for me to work on so I'm going to make her a bit smaller so I'm going to crop her so I'm going to tap on crop over here on the left hand side and let's just make her let's have a look let's just cut her right down 
See, that's the aura that you know. Do we want any of the back? I think that arching back is a little bit harsh. So I'm going to crop right down to there. So I just come across once I'm happy and click apply. If ever you're not happy, you just can come down here and click undo. So back up and a crop. Crop her right down. There, I think that's nice. And apply. So if you want to fiddle around with her now, we're not, we're not really playing around with exposure. Now I'll, I'll beautify her. There you go. It's just lightened her up a little bit more. There's loads of things you can do in Be Funky itself. Um, but I'm not too fussed about editing the image itself. So I've done editing the image and now it'll take us back to her as a layer sitting on our pastel mat. So I'm going to drag her out a little bit, pull her down, pop her over in this corner. So I'm not going to flatten because what you can do is you can like, if you imagine gluing, if she was on your printout piece of paper and you'd laid her on your pastel mat and then there's a thing down here where you can flatten the layers and that would mean basically you, you've glued her down to that piece of pastel mat and you won't be able to move her anymore. I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to click off of her and that will just give her sat there and we can see now what she'll look like on a dark grey piece of pastel mat. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little butterfly. So again, and add it as a layer. Now this butterfly, oh, it's supposed to have a transparent background, but it hasn't. So let's see if our clever little thing will cut out this for us. Let's cut out. So we want to remove the background again. And let's see if it will do it. I'm going to click yes. There you go. See, so it's cut out the background. I'm, just, I'm happy with that. So I'll click apply, export it as a layer. And then I'll remember what we did. We deleted the original picture. And then you, it's just the best way of doing it is saving its layer. It means you've got it there in future. So if I want to do the same with Sherlock's picture in a minute, which I am, add a butterfly to him, I can do it. So I'm going to drag the butterfly up. Obviously, I need to make it a lot smaller. But now our little kitty cat has got a focus. So we want to make sure, you know, she's looking up at the, her little butterfly. If we want to edit anymore, we can go in and we, if we want to change the colour of that image, we can just so it ties in. It doesn't matter. It's a bit of a cartoon image. Um, let's just change the colour, maybe. Let's change the colour. Let's change the colour. So we will go with anything that's that colour. Let's make it. Let's make it a green butterfly, shall we? Not quite as bright. There we go. Let's make it a slightly different colour butterfly. Apply that. And then we're done editing that image. So we go back to our layer. So there we've got a nice little green butterfly. So anything you want to do, you can do. So I'm quite happy with that. If I want to move her around anymore or change her size, I can because I haven't flattened her. I want to do anything more like a butterfly or put a different image in there, I can. So I'm happy with that. So what I do now is I come down and now is when I flatten. So click flatten. And all of that, now, if I click on the butterfly, I can't move it. I can't click on her at all. You can undo it, remember. Undo. And then that means my layers are back. But I'm going to flatten mine again. And then you just save it. So you just save your image. We're going to save it to the computer. So I'll call it um, Aura Butterfly Pastel Map. Or Dark Grey. Let's call it Dark Grey because that's what it is. And that's what gives us our image. You can save it as a PNG, which is bigger, or your JPEG. Um, and I'll just save it there into that folder. So that gives us a little idea of what Aura Cat looks like. Now, whilst I've got the butterfly here, I'm going to undo this, which should give us back our images. Now I'm going to delete Aura away. Let's get rid of Aura. And let's try the same thing and see if the image of Sherlock works. So let's add that as a layer. So, same again, we need to cut out, we're going to cut out and try and see if it picks him up to get rid of that background, to so remove background. This is a bit more complicated background, so it might not isolate the subject, but mm, it's done a quite a good job. Let's go back to the actual image and have a look. I think it might have taken out a little bit too much. Let's try again. Okay, it's taken out quite a lot. I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to come over to here to keep selection. 
Well, I'm going to see if, yeah. So if you want to bring back, if you think it's taken out, it's taken out his wisps a little bit too much. So by coming over here to keep, you can add those back in. But then it means you're adding in quite a bit. Let's come in here as well. So what we can do now is we're going to come in with this, this brush. This is your brush, which is quite big. So it's brought in a massive chunk there. But let's bring in, I'm going to bring it all the way around there. And then I'll show you how you can physically, manually come in and do this. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom right in here. And then you come up, if it, if it goes off screen, you just drag this bit box down to where you want to see it. So we want to take out some of those again, but we don't want to be using a massive brush. So we come to onto our brush size and I'm going to make it smaller. Might need to make it smaller again. Um, you can also just ease off the strength and the hardness as well, which is how much it removes. Um, if we have it on full 100%, it will take it right down all the way and it'll show us the pastel mat underneath. So I'll keep it to that, and then I'm just gonna... Oh, I forgot to switch it back to remove. Let me undo that. I had it on keep still, remember, because I was putting the, the image back in. So over to remove. Now let's come in here and see if we can just do a slightly nicer job of removing some of this. We'll come in again with an even finer brush if we need to. This is just to show that you can do it manually. It just takes a lot of time. So I'm going to make my brush even smaller now. Just come up around here. And again, you can take it down smaller and smaller. But you don't want to, if you're doing this as a mock-up for um, a client, just to show them what something's going to look like, take as much time as you need to get it perfect. Um, I'm going to take the brush size down even smaller now, see, so you can come right in, get it really wispy on those ends. But this is, like I say, if it's just for a mock-up, it's not the finished image. You're not giving them an edited... Um, photo you're doing a drawing for them so again I'm just going to come in here take away some more just turn around that bottom edge and then I'm going to use a bigger brush around here again in a second I'll just get this outside edge in and let's make the brush a little bit bigger again and take away all that bit that we don't want. So that just goes to show you, so you can do it manually if you want to. It's just a little bit easier to do it with that cutout. If you've got a really complicated background, then yeah, you can need to spend ages with your little brush doing this. So I'm going to apply that now. I'm happy. I've exported it as a layer as well. So I've got it over in my media folder and I'm going to delete that original image. So there you go. That leaves us now with a picture of Sherlock as a layer. So I'm going to make him bigger now. Pop him down there and then we'll move the butterfly up. Should we put it on his nose? There we go. We'll put the little butterfly on his nose. If we need to tilt it a little bit, I get we'll tilt it so it's actually looking down on him. If we need to make it a little bit smaller, we can. Make it a little bit more realistic. But it's a really simple little one just to show you um, some of the options that you've got. So I'm happy with that again now. So I'm going to flatten that and then we'll save that to our folder as well. So we'll call that one Sherlock Butterfly Dark Grey. We'll save that to our folder as well. So I'm going to do one more version of this. And it's because we've got our images saved over here. So I'm going to undo. So that's now layers again. So I'm going to delete that layer and get rid of the butterfly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Sherlock and the cat over. So I am going to add Sherlock as a layer. I'm going to make him bigger. Okay. 
And to be honest, I'd probably do this on a bigger sheet of paper, a pastel mat. I'm just going to get them in there for size. Okay, and now I'm going to bring in the cat. So I'm going to click on the cat, add as a layer. Now I'm going to crop her again. So I'm going to edit the image. Let's crop her. Crop, crop, crop. Let's crop her down. So there. There we go. Done editing image. I'm back to the full size image. So you just have to judge now how big the cat is in relation to the dog. Now I've made Sherlock bigger. Um, he's not that big. So let's make him a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe he's sitting a little bit further forward. You could have them the same size. Um, they're both sat looking up at the owner. You could put the cat at the back and then move Sherlock to the front. Make him a little bit bigger again. And you can pop the cat behind. And then what to pop the cat behind, you just basically make sure you've got the cat selected. Come over here to options. And then these little buttons here, you can move the cat backwards and forwards. So I'm going to move it backwards, which means it moves it down a layer. And there you go. You've now popped the cat in behind Sherlock. So let's move her forward a little bit. Move Sherlock up in front. Again, you can make him a little bit bigger. You can move Aura out a little bit further. You get the idea. You can just move these around. You can have one looking up that way and then you can come into Aura and go, OK, let's make her look the other way. So we'll flip around so they're both looking up at the same thing. Let's put her off to one side. This is just great for formatting things. So I'm going to move Sherlock right out. Let's make him a little bit smaller. Let's make them about the same size. So you'll see now his nose is the same level as the top of her ear. I just do that. See that where that line is? That line means that that is meeting up. So the top of her right, uh, furthest away ear is matching up with the top of his nose. Okay, so now let's bring the little butterfly back in and add as a layer. And let's make them both be looking up at the butterfly. I'm going to pop her right in the centre there. That line means she's in the centre, the pink line. And you can spin her around if you want. Okay. There you go. So that's how you do a really basic cutout montage of putting more than one image together. And you often get asked this as well if you've got a, one dog that's passed away, um, you've all separate photographs. But one thing you would need to go back to is to the client and say, OK, in relationship to the cat, how big is the dog? Should it be this big? Should it be this big? Or is he smaller than the cat? That is one thing that you really need to sort of get right with your client before you put pencil to paper. So I hope that little one has helped um, and I will be doing some more of these, um, including, like I say, putting together two or three dog heads on a surface. We'll try it on a different colour next time, a couple of different colours. Um, but really, really simple way of mocking up your pieces. OK, so thank you very much for watching. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will speak to you all again soon.